Welcome to the What If It's Not Depression podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Achina Stein. Today, we are going to be talking to Dr. Tara Perry. She specializes in core trauma transformation, helping people get to the root cause of their biggest block, connect to their authentic selves, and thrive in deep, confident peace. Oh, that sounds so wonderful. For 25 years, Dr. Perry has successfully treated celebrities, Olympians, first responders, world record holders, doctors, scientists, teachers, parents, and children. And she's been featured on Lifetime Television, the Los Angeles Times, Fox Sport West, Cosmed Magazine, and more. For 10 years, Dr. Perry taught at the number one acupuncture college in California. In 2000, she was chosen to be the first acupuncture teacher. Why can't I say that word? Acupuncture teacher at the famous Arthur Ashe Center at UCLA. Dr. Perry hosts her own podcast as well, available on all major platforms called Next Level Healing. I love that title. Welcome, Dr. Perry. And hey, if you love this episode, please, please click the like button and subscribe. Well, thank you, Dr. Stein. That was a beautiful introduction. Thank you so much. And it's delightful to be here with you. I love your story and I love your passion and I love what you're out there doing for people. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm so, I love everything that you're doing too. We were, I, we were talking about recording our chat before we started record, actually recording it. It's like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. Why didn't we record this? <laughs> this would have been great to share, um, you know, what we were talking about. And just so that the audience knows, because I just think it's so important to just repeat it, is that, you know, we were talking about how trauma can serve you, you know, and, and how, you know, people who have had trauma that it can actually, it does mold you into the person that you become. And then that serves a purpose for yourself as well as others. And, and until you experience that, it, um, it doesn't, you, you know, people don't really understand. And so, but if you can hear other people's stories and in my story, growing up in a very um, chaotic, uh, having a very chaotic childhood and having a very ill mother and a not so kind father. Uh, I, you know, grew up in a very, uh, you know, high adversity uh, environment. And it took a lot of work to unpack all that and put it back together and, and use it to serve my population, my, my, my audience, my patients and and help them to have a better life and i i'm i know you were saying the same thing but most people who are um who are um teachers and spiritual advisors and many doctors you know have done this kind of work uh, to be able to serve others and you were talking about yeah. like, Tony robbins it, you know yeah it's so powerful how um effective that perspective change is uh, tony robbins likes to say that life is happening for me not to me um and when you can i mean truly being in a victim mentality is just so destructive um, and so disempowering. So if we can step out of that and into the, you know, how is, wh where's the benefit here to me? Um, and not that it's easy all the time, because when we're suffering and, you know, suffering doesn't feel good when we're going through it. But I mean, most people who have taken a quantum leap in their life or, you know, transformed, they always look back and say, oh, that horrible thing that happened to me, that was the biggest stepping stone, the biggest opportunity I had to move forward and to expand and to to step into who I really am. And, and you know, like you, Dr. Stein, um, you know, if you hadn't been through all that, how attuned would you be to suffering and trauma and how committed would you be to helping others? I mean, what a gift that is. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and same for you, you know, Dr. Perry. So I, I really um, would love to hear your story and how you got into helping others. And as you said, setting them free, you know, um, with your work, um, you know, could you dive into that? Absolutely. So yeah, I, when I graduated from college, um, I went into the entertainment business because I lived in in Hollywood in Los Angeles. And, um, you know, that was the business everybody wanted to be in. It was glamorous. There was lots of money. It was attractive, you know. Um, and so um, the last two years I spent at um, of, of CAA, which is the most 
it was it was the biggest talent agency in town. Uh, well, it was the most powerful in town, um, and they're still very, 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 very powerful. And um, we we literally had lawyers and MBAs in the mailroom working for minimum wage because everybody wanted to be there. I mean, the competition was fierce. And after two years, um, I I just I I didn't feel like I was my soul felt so hungry. Um, I, I, and I felt like I, I was suffocating. I mean, I just didn't, I, I thought, I always say decisions are easy when there's no alternative. Mm -hmm. So I called it my homeopath one day and I said, what would I do if I want to do what you do? Um, and, and when he told me, cause I was just so impressed at how, you know, people would come in sick, they'd be in some state of disrepair or, you know, their life would be falling apart. And then in a short amount of time, they'd be having much more freedom, much more happiness, um, and I, that was appealing to me. So um, when he told me, it's really like God parted the clouds and said, this is what you're going to go do. Um, and I mean, it was insane because here I was leaving, you know, the number one talent agency in town, you know, the two top guys there wanted me to work for them. And I just, I I couldn't do it. I, I just, I, 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 again, I say decisions are easy when there's no alternative, uh, but it was one of those crazy things where, you know, you hear these stories, you know, like somebody has just been given the keys to the corner office at the biggest, busiest, you know, business in New York City. And and they're and as they're walking in, they're like, I can't do it. <laughs> if I go in there, I'm going to die. <laughs> and they go off and do something that, you know, is is appealing to their heart. Um, and it's kind of funny because after I went into acupuncture and nutritional medicine, I ended up having a lot of patients that were in the business still. And most of them said, you're so lucky you got out. Not that there aren't some categories there that, you know, people live authentically and, you know, creatively and, but it, 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 in general, it's a pretty backstabbing world. And, um, it was, it felt good to, to go into something that was, um, freeing other people. Cause I, there's a, there's a saying, if you want to, you know, warm your heart, you, you know, go and warm the heart of others. Right. right. So, um, you know, nothing makes me happier than, freeing another person from whatever limitation, whatever pain, whatever suffering they're in. And uh, originally I did it through acupuncture and nutritional medicine. Um, and then um, I also studied craniosacral with John Upledger and uh, you'll, yeah, you'll appreciate that, right? Yeah, Miss, yeah. Miss Osseopath. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, you know, energy work, um, actually, uh, I, Master Ko's teacher, Master Choa was my teacher. We were both students at the same time. And now he's Tony Robbins, energy guy. Mm -hmm. um, and all these things are, are wonderful. And thank God we're living in a time where they're now being tested at, at really, really high levels. Uh, Joe Dispenza, I think more than any human on planet Earth is is quantifying what happens when people intentionally are are dropping into this coherent state and and bringing their attention to another person with love with care with healing and and he's measuring this um with really spectacular results that you know he's measuring blood he's measuring saliva he's measuring microbiome mm -hmm. in just one week i was in the microbiome study a year and a half ago and you know they collected samples from us beginning and end mm -hmm. um and, and unlike any other scientific studies people are like lining up to do this there's like 800 people that are like yeah i'll do it you know even though it's inconvenient <laughs> and you know you got to poop into a little tube and then poop in a little tube again and <laughs> you know most people are like oh i don't want to do that but but everybody's so enthusiastic about the results that people are getting with stuff that they're they're very very and the scientists are like this is the coolest thing we've ever participated in ever because we've never seen results that were so consistent um, usually there's a bunch of outliers and you're looking for a general trend in science but the science is so, you know, Joe is looking, look, looking at the audience all the time going, I, I can't believe, you know, this is the truth <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because, because, you know, the doctors are most embarrassed to put their findings out there because they're, it's like, you know, they're afraid that people are going to say you made this up because it's just too perfect to be true. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing those results. Yeah. Well, they're actually starting to publish it. Um, Elsevier was one that published one on PTSD and they're blinding it. They're making it all scientifically blinded, blinded, blinded. So the practitioner doesn't know, you know, you know, whether there's an actual Healy there, the Healy doesn't know if there's an actual practitioner there. Um, and they're capturing all this information and they're, and they're bringing it to the most rigorous scientific standards, which is super cool. That really is. That really is. And when you go to these events, it's just not rare to find people that, you know, had stage four cancer and it went away. And, you know, uh, that's the thing that really attracted the attention of the doctors. Um, one of them 
you know, had nine clinics going and was an mm -hmm. amazing MD researcher. And that's a very rare combination, as you know. Mm -hmm. Lots of people get their certificate. They can be a practitioner, they can be a doctor, but they they don't know the rigors of, of the scientific process. Right. Um, and then the people that know that, they don't, they're not doctors. And so getting somebody that's a combination. So one of these fellows, you know, Dr. Joe went to and uh and he didn't have the time of day for Dr. Joe because he's like, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're up to. But then he ended up going to a, a, a conference and then he met this woman that had one of these spectacular healings. And he he's a doctor. So he's like looking at the medical records before and after. And he's going, oh, my goodness, what's going on? here? <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, that's so great. That's wonderful to find people like that. I mean, clearly the universe is working in, in his favor and uh, Joe's dispenses favor. You know, there's definitely a purpose behind all of this and he's making it come to fruition. That's really, really awesome. So and it's also nice that it's available in all kinds of different forms. You know, there's the books, there's meditations, there's, you know, whatever, like we, you and I were talking before we, we didn't turn the recording on, which we wish we had, <laughs> but it, it, you know, there's so many avenues to, to, uh, embark upon that, that have profound healing benefits that, that really have, they don't have the side effects of drugs, right. um, that have tremendous, like Wim Hof is studying the results of cold therapy. Um, there's, um, uh, Leland, um, uh, Holgate, who's got the dream, the, um, mindful warrior and he's doing breath work and he was a paraplegic once and a quadriplegic once, and he got over both of them through breath work. Um, you know, you of course know infinite amounts about diet, nutrition and lifestyle. And, you know, any one of these things can start to make profound shifts in a person's life and you add them up together. And, and pretty soon you're living an entirely different, beautiful life. Exactly. exactly. And we didn't even talk about all of the vagal nerve stimulation and gut healing and, <laughs> and all the spiritual connections that people can make to, and it's really starting with uh, the lowest hanging fruit. You don't have to, it, you know, in some situations you have to have a certain order, you have to do it in a certain order, but for the most part, like just start start some I, I have this great cartoon and it's actually in the other room I should bring it in but it's basically a it's a, a camel and it's flattened on the ground with this giant stack of, of of sacks on its back and one sack is you know poor nutrition the other one is bad thoughts the other one is not enough love the other one's environmental toxicity it's like people want to know how to get healthier well take start taking the sacks off <laughs> 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 exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So let's dive into, you know, why you're here. What if it's not depression? And, you know, you wanted to talk about um, from your angle, what the root, what a root cause is of depression. You know, I talk a lot about root causes and, and how to bring people back into balance and with the mind, body and spirit. And so I would love for you to tell us from your angle, what it, the root cause is for you. So what's really crazy, um, I'm going to be interviewing uh, Jill Bolte Taylor coming up. She's the woman who had the stroke and knocked out the whole left hemisphere. Well, guess how we are without the left hemisphere of our brain. Take a guess. We're, we're more creative. More we're in a state of bliss. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you, you're not aware of time. You're not, you don't have categories. You don't know about, you can't count. You don't know where you stop and the rest of the universe starts, but it's this blissful, blissful, blissful state. So all this suffering is a, is a construct of the right brain, which, uh, I'm sorry, wait a moment, I'm mixing the up yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the left brain. Sorry. Wait, yeah. wait, no, there is a construct of the left brain. Thank you. I'm a little dyslexic here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's that, it's that categorizing, it's the compartmentalizing, the comparison of where we are compared to other people and the judgments that go along with that. So there's, um, yeah, uh, language, as, as Marissa language, Pierce, the language yeah. centers mm -hmm. of your brain and, and speaking that's mm -hmm. all on the left side. Yes. And as Marissa Pierce says, it doesn't matter what happens to us. It's the interpretation that we make of that experience that ends up harming us. So that really is, oh my gosh, there's so much to unpack there. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of the people that I work with, sometimes their suffering can be really mild. Like, um, you know, daddy spoke badly to me when I was doing my homework and made me feel like I was stupid. So that pattern got carried on through, you know, the next, 
you know, decades and, and they didn't feel worthy. Mm. Um, and this particular person, you know, is a, is an oral surgeon and, and just didn't feel comfortable asking for what she was worth. Mm. Um, you know, and she would go home exhausted and just always feeling like not enough. And literally it took one session to just rewire that so that she realized, wow, I'm a really super accomplished person. I mean, in her case, her sister is like even more accomplished. So again, we're getting into that comparison thing where you don't right. look at just what you've accomplished and feel great about it. Um, right. because it's appropriate for who you are. And, and so now she can, you know, feel great about herself, ask her what she's worth. And I said, and she says, I go home with more energy. I'm a better wife. I'm a better mother. Those are outcomes that when you resolve that trauma, um, that I hear all the time is like, wow, I, like, I just worked with a lawyer the other day and, uh, she would normally go to the kids, her, her child's uh, ball games and be looking at her watch and worried about what she had to do at the office and the next thing to do. And, you know, just caught up on the hamster wheel. Um, but now, because she was just able to rewire those simple wordings, those simple stories that she had going on in her brain, um, she can be calm, she can be present, and she can look at her life and realize, wow, I've accomplished a tremendous amount. And whoever we are, whatever we've accomplished, I mean, it's a lot usually if we look around and I mean, getting through school, getting yourself out of bed, raising children, um, you know, showing up for your neighbor, um, whatever. But there, if, if if we live in the state of not enough lack and, and constantly looking, there, there's a fabulous book called The Gap and the Gain. Mm -hmm. And basically, if we spend our lives looking at the horizon and we're constantly, you know, you, do you ever get to the horizon? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. And if you're, if you've got a whip over yourself, beating yourself, cause you're right. not at the horizon, what do you spend your whole life doing? Right. You know, whipping yourself into the ground. Exactly. Um, so the gap and the gain is, is looking at the horizon and using that as your North star, like you uh, Dr. Stein, you know, you've accomplished a tremendous amount. And if all you did was go, oh yeah, but I've accomplished this, but I haven't accomplished that. I've accomplished this, but I haven't accomplished that, right. which, you know, I, I spent a lot of my life doing that. Um, so the gap in the gain teaches you to look back in time, you know, look back three months, look back a year and go, oh, look what I have done. Right. right. And then once you get all those, appreciate it. Yeah. Let's appreciate that. That's really yeah. important. Yes. Do a Absolutely. Snoopy, do a Snoopy dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's really important to look at that and not constant, but it, it takes time to become aware and recognize mm -hmm. that that's what's happening in the back of your mind. And so, so that's for, for me, the magic is finding out what's going on the subconscious mind. So when I'm working with somebody, we talk them into a relaxed state. As you know, there's four brainwave states, two are waking, two are asleep. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in beta right now. So we're aware of what's going on. We can multitask. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have very heightened awareness. In alpha, you're calm, you're relaxed, you're in meditative state. That's when your body's healing. That's when you're drifting in and out of sleep. Well, if you're in a low alpha state, that's when uh, you're, 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 you have better access to your subconscious mind. So at, in that state, we can go in, find out what, what, what is that trauma? What is the, um, I always start with the feeling. So what is the feeling that somebody's struggling with? You know, um, uh, we, we, we go into quite a bit of detail. I, you know, if, if somebody wants to work with me, we set up a half hour interview where I can find out what is the feeling that you're struggling with? Is it stress? Is it not enough? Is it, um, anxiety? You know, where do you feel it in your body? What triggers it? What color is it? What do you notice about it? Is it heavy? Is it empty? Is it, you know, really get a feeling for what this energy is that's hanging around every day, sometimes right. for your whole life. That's not uncommon. I mean, right. so often I say, how long have you felt this? And they're like, I don't remember not feeling it. Right. Um, and then, uh, then I asked them, okay, I have, I have a magic wand. It's a real magic wand, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's actually a special story behind it. Um, <laughs> but uh, if we wave this magic wand, all of that goes away and it's replaced by three feelings that you'd give anything to feel on a regular basis. What would that be? So we get that GPS map. Okay. I'm here. And my dream is to be here. Right. I always say that we're like iPhone 14s operating on iPhone four technology. Uh-huh. So it's really just a computer program. It's just those neurons. It's Hebe's law, you know, Donald Hebb back in 1948, who 
figured out that neurons that fire together, wire together. Exactly. So you fire and wire that same thing and you have a strong emotion and, um, and a clear thought and that creates a very powerful bond. So you're firing and wiring, firing and wiring, and there you're on the hamster wheel, you right. know, and it's just, you're thinking the same things that you did yesterday, the day before. And most people don't have any conscious awareness or control over that. It just happens over and over and over again. And it thinks it's the reptilian brain. It thinks it's saving you. It thinks it's keeping you safe, but you're really an iPhone four mm -hmm. when you should be an iPhone 14. Right. And so once the, the magic of working with the subconscious mind in my experience is that, um, you 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 can find out why that iPhone 4 got stuck as as an iPhone 4 what was happening then what is what were the needs of that iPhone 4 you know what what was it suffering from you know is is it exhausted does it just want to go away now mm -hmm. um but it, or does it still want to hang around does it want to make sure you're you know still safe or or whatever 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 but that dialogue has to occur so that it can go oh okay I don't want to be an iPhone 4 that's dangerous that's a hot poker I can let that go but then it needs that really super clear pathway um, I call it my yellow brick road from where you are to where you want to go. And so I make them an audio tape that's customized to them that they listen to each and every night. So as they're drifting into that, that subconscious zone, the subconscious mind is hearing that, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, now I remember that's where I'm going, that's where I'm going, that's where I'm going, because otherwise it's too scary. The subconscious, you know, when it's under stress, when it's frightened, it's just, it just wants to sit in front of the television set, drink a beer and go to sleep. Mm-hmm. So I work, <laughs> I work with people that have an eight, nine or a 10 need to change and an eight, nine or a 10 desire to change because mm -hmm. with that energy focus and commitment, you'll just do the daily stuff. Even when you don't want to, like Joe says, the most powerful meditations are the ones that you, you know, do when you don't want to be doing them. Right. Right. So. Yes. Yeah. And you know, I think it's important to really get under the hood about that. Like what's going on that's making you feel vulnerable and unsafe about this meditation? What is it that you're trying to avoid? Because that's where the money is. Mm -hmm. That's where the money is. So it's actually better to lean in mm -hmm. than to run away or suppress. Mm -hmm. Say that over and over and over again. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> right. it's so true. Like my meditation teacher would say, you know, when you, when you feel all those knots inside, actually I had a client the other day. Um, he, um, uh, he was, he was doing great, doing great, doing great. And then, um, he just had some old stuff and this often happens, old stuff will come up. Um, and he's like, God, I'm, I'm, I'm having these dreams and I'm feeling like I'm doing battle with this energy. You know, what do I do? What do I do? I fight it as hard as I can. And I said, well, just take a breath. And instead of fighting it and doing battle with it, just sit and go as deep as you can into that pain and suffering mm -hmm. and then just see what happens. And he texted me three days later and said, Oh my God, that's amazing. It's gone. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just sit with it. Just sit with it and breathe through it and let it flow through you and pass through you because that's what it's really trying to do. It's just that you have to let it pass. And so it does, you know, some people are frightened that it's going to consume them, drive them crazy, uh, commit suicide, whatever it is that they think that they're, that it's going to, you know, do, but it's really, it's, it's just emotions. And it's easy to say just emotions. Cause I know it's painful and causes a lot of distress, but if they can feel safe in doing that, and sometimes it is having someone like you or a, a therapist who understands this process or a practitioner that, you know, can work you know, through these emotions with you whatever modality, I think, you know, it does pass and it's really, important. yeah, I actually worked with somebody the other day and she had had some really, really scary, potentially self-destruct, well, self-destructive dreams and, and it frightened her deeply, mm -hmm. deeply, deeply. And, um, and so I said, Hey, you want to get to the bottom of it? And she agreed. And so we did a session and, um, she was able to, uh, connect to a, a loving person in her life. Cause she obviously was suffering. Well, not obviously, but she was suffering from a lot of pain from not getting the love when she was a young person growing up. And so she created all this self-judgment, which is all just a story. And it's just a story. And the, the great thing about creating a story is that you just can create a new one. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. But anyway, she connected with the love of her grandmother and I'm um, actually, she had a crazy psychic experience happen later that night, um, which was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, uh, I, I'm, I don't really feel at liberty to share it right now until sure, I sure. get permission from her, but it was, it was crazy psychic experience. Um, you know, sometimes you, I don't know if you've ever had this happen, but just, you get this signal from the universe that is just like, no, that there, it just can't be, it, it, it's beyond chance. Mm -hmm. Um, 
uh, and you hear this in Joe Spenza things all the time too, where, you know, the more, the more you're in synchronicity or the more you're in flow, the more these synchronistic things that seem impossible can show up. Right. But right. we have to get out of the way. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, what I usually talk about is how old are you when you're, when you're remembering these experiences? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times these experiences happen in very early childhood, two to seven years old. And, and, you know, those, those ages are, things can happen. And there are a lot scarier um, for a child, like the boogeyman under the bed. I talk about that with some of my patients, like, the boogeyman, I remember the boogeyman under the bed and I would jump as far off the bed <laughs> as I could. So the boogeyman wouldn't get me and pull me under uh, and I'm gone forever. And the thing is, as an adult, we know that that's not real. But if we have that sensation of an emotion, we assume because it's still there, it's still the boogeyman, but you don't necessarily connect it. But as an adult, we then create stories to explain that emotion and it's really just the boogeyman. You're mm -hmm. just trying to explain it in a, why is this so horrible feeling? Mm -hmm. Because that's your two-year-old part or your three-year-old yep. or four-year-old part that is still experiencing that. And that's why when you just described how it was just missing her mother's love, the pain of not having her mother's love or not being, you know, crying in the middle of the night in your crib and nobody coming to comfort you, mm -hmm. you know, that, that could be very traumatic for some children. Absolutely. I get people who go back to the womb and, you know, might not have been wanted as children. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that can be very traumatic. Um, or being a toddler, I've had, uh, women that have been through, you know, years and years of intensive, intensive, really top level therapy. Um, and we're able to get deeper, faster, just doing a session where they can get into their subconscious mind and be able to connect to that. Uh, in her case, it was medical trauma. Uh, just, you know, the doctors weren't able to help her. The parents weren't able to help her. She was in physical pain. And so she got this learned helplessness. Um, and, yeah. and she's a dance therapist and, and amazing. She's on my YouTube channel and my, um, my Instagram, actually a lot of the people that I've worked with are, cause that that's kind of what I got. I, I got motivated a, a couple of years ago. I got like, I, I've just got to start recording some of this stuff because people are getting over, you know, PTSD that they've, mm -hmm. you know, was ruining their lives. I have one gal that was attacked by a Rottweiler and went through six jaw surgeries. And her husband contacted me because she, um, she had developed a choking disorder that every time she ate, she would maybe have to go to the emergency room. She had three young children, you know, this was ruining their lives. And, you know, in the first session, she was able to realize, wow, this is profound and it's shifting me. And and by three sessions, she was just done with it. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it does come back on a somatic level. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people spend thousands and thousands of dollars to find some medical cause. And, it, and it's not something that's necessarily in your head, so to speak. It's 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 in your body. I am so energy. glad you said that. Trauma. Because it's, if you give it a name, you give it a diagnosis, it doesn't get you any further to solving it. I know. I had I one know. gal that was, I mean, she had saw her husband catch on fire. He's fine, you know, but she had, and she was a shy person anyway. So, so it ignited uh, PTSD, uh, Lyme, mold, Babesia, mast cell inflammation, and she was had become allergic to ev everything but five foods. Well, it's great to throw a bunch of labels on that and, and diagnoses, you know, and sometimes that's useful. But if you don't dial back that stress, if you don't help somebody get from the sympathetic nervous system being, you know, engaged fully all the time where right. your immune system is shut down, your hormonal system is shut down, your digestive system is fun shut down, you, you can't survive in that state. Right. So, so the subconscious mind the, the, the has to be able to see, oh, I don't want it turned up at 100. I need it dialed back way, 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 way back where it's still functional in case something happens but it's essentially off because there's no emergency going on right. and the subconscious mind isn't going to make that journey because it thinks what's familiar is safe until it can see, Oh, that pathway is going to actually take me to someplace safe. Right. 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 And so we talk about limbic retraining, hmm. um, you know, uh, and trusting the environment as safe coming to that place. So there's different ways to get around it, <laughs> I think. And uh, so, yeah, it's, 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 definitely something that has to be addressed because if you're in fight flight, you're not going to be in rest, digest and heal 
mode. And so if that's why sometimes people are stuck on this hamster wheel and they're not getting better and better, they still have to do all those things. But if they're not, if, if they're stuck in that, in that place, then they really have to go back to that point of that limbic activation and address that subconsciously retraining. There's many, many ways of doing that. So talk a little bit more about um, what else you do. You know, you, you talked about the, you know, from your standpoint, the connections between trauma um, and how obviously these all, this could be a way where someone feel, can feel helpless and hopeless and become depressed uh, because they feel like there's no way out um, and then become really anxious as well because like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Is this going to be the rest of my life? Yeah. So so, so as you know, scientists know that um, 90 to 95% of our brain is subconscious and five to 10% is conscious. So um, I usually say that it, it's pretty hard to solve a problem with five to 10% of your brain. Yes. So, and I tell people all the time, you know, people are like, well, how do I prepare for coming? No, don't do anything. I, I really, I need you to show up and do nothing. <laughs> 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 you you need to come in and just like, you know, you're driving into a car wash. You don't drive through the car wash. You just put your car in neutral and allow the, the, the device to take you through, I love uh, you that. know, and, and they're like, well, I'm afraid I won't do it right. There's no, you can't screw it up. It's like you're sitting in a movie theater. All you have to do is tell me, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? There literally are no wrong answers. <laughs> right, right. And yeah, that's, and that, that's even that response. I'm afraid I won't do it right. That is a clue right there about what's going on. Right. Yeah. So the, mag the magic to me is just being able to go into the subconscious mind, which is pretty challenging to do by yourself uh, because you can't, you know, it's like when we're dreaming, we we're not aware we're dreaming. Right. Um, so so when you're in that sort of delicious, relaxed zone, then you have better access to this giant reservoir, which is your subconscious mind. So stuff can bubble up that like you don't have access to in the conscious mind. Mm -hmm. So um you know, that's ultimately why meditation works really, really well, but it can take a long time. Um, a lot of advanced meditators love what I do because they already know how powerful their subconscious mind is. They already know how powerful meditation is, but they just need that extra help to uncover whatever that block is for them. Um, so uh, for example, I recently worked with a gallerist in Switzerland. Uh, she, I met her at a Joe Dispenza thing. She says, you know, I just, I felt okay asking for money when I was an attorney, but as a as a gallerist, I just, you know, I, I, I don't feel okay. I feel wrong. I feel dirty selling art for money. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, so anyway, it, we took her back to the root, the cause and the reason it was something she completely didn't expect. And, um, you know, we're able to fire it and wire it with new neural neur neural pathways. And now she, you know, gets 30 and $40,000 of painting and is having a ball. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's so, awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me, how are you different from other hypnotherapists? That's a great question. Um, and, and so, um, in, in my experience, cause I worked with two of the top hypnotherapists in Los Angeles when I was, uh, living there, um, it was not anywhere near this experience. Um, because if you're, if you're, if you're talking somebody down, but you're still in the realm of the conscious mind, then you're not getting that 90 to 95% of the subconscious mind. That's a very feeling state. Um, it's a, it's very, it's a very illogical state in some ways, which is why that five to 10% of your brain has such a hard time resolving it. I mean, you, and, and I tell people this all the time, look, you, you can't, you haven't solved it with your conscious mind. So just let go of expectation. Um, and, and even as Joe Dispenza says, you know, uh, if, when it comes from the quantum field, when it comes from that magical place of the subconscious mind, it, it often comes in a way you don't expect it. So mm -hmm. to sit there and try to force it, that's that, that gets in the way to, you know, suffering is in that mental hamster wheel and, and getting off of that is, is the key. Right. Um, so um, I'm a I'm a I'm a bit of a hybrid because I've I've done you know a ton of the Joe Dispenza work I've I've done a lot of hundreds of hours of Tony Robbins stuff you know there's a reason he gets a million dollars for eight hours of his time you know he's really figured out some brilliant ways to leverage emotion and and understands the mind so well um, and then Marissa Peer um, I trained personally with her um, and you know truth is truth is truth and different people are are pulling um levels of understanding and um creating learning environments for that right. um so 
uh, and then, you know, of course I've got 23 years of acupuncture and nutritional medicine. And I, I studied pranic healing, which is the master co mm -hmm. tradition for three years. And, um, you know, creating sacral work. And, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a weird hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> so, so because my toolbox is rather large when somebody comes to me, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of able to, and then I'm fairly intuitive too. So I can find a kind of just see, you know, okay, oh, this is what the, and, and so I'm looking for the way in. Right. Um, it's funny because I just started voice lessons. Um, I'm not looking, I'm not aspiring to be a singer, but I, you know, people are listening to my recordings all day for, you know, years. And I, I want that experience to be pleasing for them. So I started taking voice lessons with a woman who's a, a Broadway star. She did Adina Menzel's role on Broadway. So when she was working with me, and, and again, the similarities are so interesting because when I'm trying to figure out how to use my voice, I don't know the pathway. Mm -hmm. I have to surrender to this person who knows the way. And she's, you know, she's doing this dance with me. She's seeing where I am, how I'm reacting and, and guiding me. And that's very similar. I, I, I was just so struck as I was doing this process the similarities and you know you don't rush ahead using your conscious mind you deal with what you're dealing with right there it took me three months to basically sing two words properly <laughs> but after that then I you know I had my training wheels on and I was up and running so um you know it's 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 looking for that way in, like, how do I bypass the conscious mind? Because the conscious mind hasn't had the answer. It hasn't produced the answer. How do I get around that and, and connect to that deep subconscious need that's there? Um, right. What is it? What does it want? What is it suffering from? Um, and sometimes it's, it's known to the person and sometimes it's completely different. Mm. Sometimes people go into a past life <laughs> right, right, and that's okay. And does, is it real? I don't know. I don't care because it's real to that person. <laughs> right. Yes, that's exactly right. It's real to that person, wherever that started, it could be a story, something that they were told and, and it just stuck for some reason. And that's, what's been driving the bus the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what, when you talk about thriving and, uh, you know, getting to their biggest blocks, I know you mentioned a bunch of different examples of blocks, but what would you say was the most common block that, you know, anxiety is one that people just have their, there's just a nervous exhaustion. Um, you know, they're, they're, they don't feel like they're enough. They're, they're trying to accomplish something. They're struggling with something. Um, you know, they've been battling something for years, decades, you know, they've tried books, therapy, um, you know, sometimes it's somebody that just wants to go to the next level in their life. They want, you know, they've got a creative block or, 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 you know, like in the case of the gallerist, just mm -hmm. didn't know how to sell these paintings. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, right. so it really doesn't matter what the block is. Um, I just need them to describe the experience of the block. They don't need to know why it's there. They don't need to know what it's up to. Just what does it feel like? What's the uncomfortable experience that you're having every day? And typically it's, it's, it's costing them that it's costing them energy. Like the, the, the dental, um, uh, the oral surgeon that I was working with, you know, she would go home exhausted and now she can go home and, you know, be a better wife, be a better mother, be a better, um, provider. Um, mm -hmm. so, so once you remove those filters that are just stupid, they're stupid, outdated stories. They don't have a, a need in your life anymore. It's like wearing, you know, tennis shoes that you wore when you were you know, five years old, they're, they're too tight. Right. You know, they've got holes in them. They don't look good. It's time to take them off. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's it's right. time to throw them away and get new ones. You already have new ones sitting in your closet waiting there for you. Right. Right. Um, so it's just delicious to see, you know, I, I feel like I, I get to let people out of prison. Um, <laughs> I mean, okay. Their mind and their yes, it yeah. totally is. And sometimes, you know what, I don't get choked up that often in sessions, you, you have to not because you, you do find yourself around a lot of pain and suffering. I mean, you know, children that are beaten bloody into unconsciousness, that's, that's, you know, if I took that on, I wouldn't be functional, but one, one did choke me up. Um, I had an 80 year old and, and good Lord, this man had never been able to love himself ever in his entire life. And the pain and the suffering that was coming from that at all levels of his life, you know, the, the toll that it takes on your, on your, your physical vitality, your relationships, your work. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so when he finally just connected to this, 
being inside of him that was just a child that wanted to be loved. I mean, I literally, I, I just, I had to choke back the tears because, mm -hmm. and then there was this, you know, what's crazy when somebody's at that precipice of letting go of that thing that they have been struggling to be free of what's so cuckoo is a lot of times when they're at that moment where they're, it's, it's just about to go, they're like, wait a minute, it can't go. It's my friend. I, I'd miss it. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I know what you're so, talking So you have to that. do a process to say, it's, it's okay. It's time to go. It's safe to let it go now. It's good for my health to let it go now. It's good for it to be free now. It's right. good for me to, it's, you just have to do this like blessing. And, and because as, as the, what the reason Joe said, it's breaking the habit of being yourself. Right. It's a, it's a habit. And the, the subconscious mind, that reptilian brain thinks that safe is familiar. Familiar is safe. It's like Stockholm syndrome. So, so there actually has to be something that occurs to break those neural pathways, to break that bond and create the new bonds that you really want. Yeah. Yeah. And then once you've done it, it's like getting out of prison. I, I feel like Glenda, the good witch, I'm not giving you anything you don't already have. You right. just don't see it yet. It's right there. It's closer than your own breath. Right. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, you can, look at it in, in a different way. Um, you're looking at the emotional aspect of it, but there's a part that is, has allowed you to survive. And it's really that part that you're letting go, that child part of you that is no, no longer needs to be there in order to, to, um, you know, put, keep you in survival mode because the war is over. Whatever happened at the age of two is no longer happening. And a lot of the times those parts don't even know that you've grown. Mm -hmm. So it is connecting on that level, on an emotional level. So a lot of times the people who are really ready for this kind of work that you're talking about are the people who've been in psychotherapy for years and have gotten like not nowhere, but just haven't addressed the problem, which is really in the emotional subconscious realm that you're talking about. And even though psychoanalysis is supposed to you know, when people do psychoanalysis, it's supposed to address these things, the subconscious, it, I feel like it actually puts you more into the cognitive realm, more, mm. more, as opposed to really connecting to the emotions. I couldn't agree to... more. And to sit there and talk about your problems over and over and over again, talk about a way to yeah. cement that in. <laughs> I know. And I feel like that psychotherapy, there's, a, there's certainly a benefit up to a point, just understanding mm -hmm. and educating and understanding that it's not your fault. And, you know, things happen and, and coming to a place where things make sense cognitively. But if you're still carrying around these feelings, then, then that's where the cognitive talk part needs to stop. And you go into, so I've had patients where I do similar work as you do, but, you know, really looking at the emotional realm and dropping into that, which does require a breathwork component and, and meditative component. And uh, so yeah, it's, a, it's, a, I'm realizing that we kind of do the same kind of work on some level, coming at it from different angles. And some, some people would probably do so much better with your method. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's finding the, 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 the person that will get to it faster or easier. Um, and that they feel safe and connected to, I think is really important. It's really important to trust the process uh, in order to, uh, to get to the, those goals. So that's awesome. And using your, your intuition and zoning into the emotion, uh, the way you describe is, is exactly what it, it seems like I'm intuitively doing as well. So, yeah, it's definitely a mix of art and science. It really, really is. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate you. You know, we need more people like you to do this work. And more like you. Good Lord. We <laughs> definitely need people to bridge uh, Western medicine with uh, holistic medicine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on to this episode and sharing your, what the work that you do. Um, and it's so, so many more people need to meet with you. <laughs> so, yeah. And if anybody feels like this is, you know, I often find people that find me are the ones that go, Oh yes, that's totally exactly what I've been looking for. So I do do half hour consults with people. They fill out a, a few questions ahead of time to see if they're a good fit and um, set up a time to talk to me and they can find me at consultterra.com. Awesome. Yes. And you are, your website is, 
consult Tara. Yeah, I see that. Mm -hmm. Okay.com. And you're also on Instagram and Facebook as well. And I really appreciate you providing a free guided meditation. That's also at consult Tara.com. So, um, wonderful. So you're there. Yeah, if, if they go to uh, consult Tara.com, they can actually get a special one just for your listeners. If they t just type a message in, um, Dr. Stein sent me, uh -huh. I'd like the free meditation. I will give them one that is not published yet and, um, seems to be a favorite for people so far. It's called uh -huh. unzip. Oh, great title. Yeah. I love that. I Basically love you that. unzip from all the garbage, the personality that you think you are and just go into nothing. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. I'm so <laughs> excited. I'm so excited about, I can't wait for this episode to be published. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. I'm so glad we got to know each other. Absolutely. Yes. And maybe we'll see each other at, at the next Joe Dispenza retreat. <laughs> That'd be awesome. And if you're ever down here in Music City, please look me up. I will. I will. <laughs> great. Well, uh, thank you again and, uh, and uh, have a great holiday. Thank you. Mm -hmm.